welcome back to the readings of The Way Back to Mayberry by Joey Fan. Today we read from chapter 14, You Can't Stay Here. And the title of the Andy Griffith episode is Mayberry Goes Bankrupt. Today's scripture reading comes from Acts chapter 20, verse 35. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. We've all seen it. You know where it is, especially if you live in a small town. It's the one house everyone sees as the town's disgrace. The one lot with cars in the front yard that haven't moved in years. Grass that rarely gets mowed and shrubs that are never trimmed. It's the house we look at and wonder why the owners don't do something with the place. The eyesore of the neighborhood, the one we pass by and just shake our heads. Mayberry has a house like that, too. The yard is a mess, the fence is dilapidated, the house needs painting, and the roof needs fixing. It's owned by a nice old man named Frank Myers. It seems that Frank is in the berry business, that is... He has a huge collection of fake berries that he uses to create women's hats. Unfortunately, berries aren't in style right now. If they ever do come back in style, Frank will be sitting on a gold mine. In the meantime, Frank is having problems making ends meet. He wasn't able to pay his taxes, so the town council decided to foreclose on his house. After all, it is a dump. It's the scourge of Mayberry. The faster they get Frank out, the council members reason, the quicker they can do something with the property to make it more presentable. At the town council meeting, the mayor and the rest of the council remembers and the rest of the council members elect Andy to serve the eviction notice to Frank. Andy is against the idea, but he knows that he is outnumbered. Andy states that this is one part of sheriffing he can do without. Andy complies, however, and takes the news to Frank, who isn't really surprised. He knew that he was behind on his taxes, but he just kept hoping to catch a break. It seems that his break is never, never going to come. Andy says something about trying to delay the council's actions, but his statement sounds kind of weak even to Andy. Andy has no solution to the problem, so he does his duty. He serves the eviction notice. Frank accepts it, and he tells the sheriff he is glad that Andy is the one who delivered the notice. In an uncomfortable moment, it's good to have a friend close by. Later, back on the tailor's front porch, Andy is feeling really bad about what he has been called to do. He complains about the mayor and the town council and how stubborn they are. Andy and Aunt B recall their friendship with Frank and how it is a shame that this has happened to such a nice person. Such a shame, indeed. The conversation would have probably ended there if it weren't for Opie. Opie asks Andy what evicted means. Andy explains the term and then Opie asks where Frank will go since he doesn't have a house anymore. Andy further explains that Frank will probably go to stay with friends or family or something like that. Opie then asks Andy if he means friends like themselves. Andy and Aunt B slowly begin to realize that Opie is suggesting that Frank come and stay with the Taylors for a while. At first, Andy and Aunt B are hesitant. Why, you can't just ask somebody to come stay with you. Or can you? Then it all makes sense. It is so simple. Identifying a need and meeting it right there on the spot. I often wonder why it took Opie to make the suggestion. It would seem that Andy and Aunt B would be more aware of Frank's immediate needs than Opie. However, Opie knew enough to know that Frank needed a place to stay. He also knew that they had an extra bedroom and he felt at least partly responsible for Frank's predicament because his paw served him the eviction notice. Even though Andy and Aunt B both cared for Frank and were distraught about the situation, 
It never dawned on either of them to invite Frank into their home. As I watch this scene, I wonder if my reaction would be like Opie's or like Andy's. Would I immediately see the opportunity, or would I just sigh and think to myself how life sure is unfair? Sometimes I think we have programmed ourselves right out of our responsibility to each other. We are fortunate enough to live in a country where the needs of the less fortunate are very much a priority. The government has implemented welfare programs for years. I also believe our churches do a very good job at tending to the needs of the community. But how willing are we as individuals to make the personal sacrifice to help someone in need? Do we just assume that someone else will step in and assist the person? Or do we, like Opie, take an active role in helping the person ourselves? When you think about it, it is much easier to give money to a worthy program than it is to really get involved. But is that really what Jesus is talking about in Matthew when he states that the ones who will inherit eternal life are the same ones who tend to the least of these? while here on this earth. Usually it does take some sacrifice for us to help someone in need. It might take of our time and energy, and chances are we will be inconvenienced in some way. But will we even see the opportunity to help unless we are specifically looking for it? We can be so involved with our own lives and schedules that we may never see the Frank Myers of our society. After Frank arrived at Andy's house, they were going through some of Frank's valuables when they found a hundred-year-old bond that was purchased by his, great, by his grandfather from the town of Mayberry. With compounding interest, the value of the bond was calculated to be worth over a quarter of a million dollars. Since the town obviously couldn't pay the bond, the now compassionate town council decided it would be appropriate to fix up Frank's house, that is, until they realized that the bond was purchased when Mayberry was part of the Confederacy. Since the bond was bought with Confederate money, it was worthless. As you can imagine, the council members immediately lost their newfound compassion and once again demanded that Frank be evicted. Fortunately, Andy was able to convince the council members that they had just done something nice for a neighbor and should leave it at that. That short scene on the front porch with Opie, Andy, and Aunt B was fairly insignificant with respect to the rest of the episode, but I think it speaks volumes to our general attitude toward those in need. It is easy to assume that somebody else will take care of the situation or that the person in need will make it somehow. It's much harder to really notice the opportunity to serve and to take a genuine interest. Is it really that hard? Maybe it just requires the ability to see those situations through the eyes of a child, just like Opie saw Frank. Thanks for following along, and come back next week to hear another reading from The Way Back to Mayberry.